Racing is, uh, it's, it's my drug. It's what makes me who I am. It's you and the car, two, 3,000 horsepower. It gets the blood flowing. It's a feeling you can't really get or describe to somebody unless they've done it themselves. It's what I live for and it's why I'm here. I'm Ron Mowen. I'm the owner of Vengeance Racing. I started Vengeance Racing in 2006 in the back corner of this very building. It was one bay, one lift, and that was it. Fast forward 11 years, we have taken over the entire building, grown our company, grown our reputation by building the nation's fastest GM performance vehicles. I've been with Vengeance since day one. Mike Carnahan has been a friend of mine since well before Vengeance Racing. He's our lead tuner and GM ECU calibrator. Those are the factory computers that come on the cars. So I'm in charge of setting them up, handling the diagnostics. I would venture to say he's one of the best tuners in the country, if not the world, with the vehicles that we work on. Most of our business is developing packages and building cars that are proven combinations for the street, and if the customer wanted to take them to the track, they could. My name is David Crunkleton. I'm the general manager at Vengeance Racing. I handle all of the vehicle builds in-house, the parts ordering and purchases, and basic management over all of the employees that we have. My name is Jay Clegg. I'm the shop foreman lead fabricator, and the aftermarket ECU tuner here at Vengeance Racing. My role in our normal day-to-day -day shop duties is to oversee the builds and help the technicians with any questions they might have. A big part of our R&D focus in some of these bigger cars that we have out here is we're able to go against the grain a little bit and go beyond what just your normal shop can bolt together and, and put out in a day or two and be able to develop bigger and better things to always have a product that not only performs better, but is a cleaner install or a, a more street-friendly combination where the customer can go out and enjoy it even further, again, whether on street or track. That's what we've strived for for the past 12 years was just delivering an experience that you can't find elsewhere and delivering a product that is unmatched in the industry. Racing is our proving grounds. It's where we get to take everything that we've spent time to research and develop and install and cut knuckles over, really come to be. On one good racing weekend, you'll learn as much as you would as six months sitting in the shop. You'll read in a ton of data, you'll analyze a ton of things that you just can't do on a day-to-day -day basis, driving around on the street or working on a dyno. It was definitely a different environment for us, but the customers are the ones that really drove us to start racing these events, really kind of building cars for these events. And at the end of the day, you're gonna do what your customer wants. I actually started with Vengeance Racing 11 and a half years ago. Eddie Blackwell came to us within the first six months of opening the company. I had a Corvette that I bought new off the showroom floor. He's from Alabama. He came over one day, brought his red C5 Z06. They had one technician at the time, and then another guy that was sweeping the floor, basically. Sat down and talked with Eddie, looked over the car, scoped out a build. I was gonna build a LS7 440. Put everything together on paper and built the car for him. In the process, Eddie just, he's one of those guys that you can't help but love him. I'm just a car guy through and through. You know, going fast, having fun. Exactly what I love that. So half mile racing is a lot different than any other kind of racing out there. And the biggest reason is, especially in the drag racing world, 
it's much more relatable than what you would find at, let's say, NHRA or one of the other uh, more class-based, higher-end, uh, professional types of racing. The reason being is because most of the cars that are out there either are or look like real street cars. This allows our customers to go out there with a basic street car and run it wide open throttle. A person that's coming to attend the event watch the cars go down the runway, they most likely have something that is like or is the same type of vehicle that they're watching going down the track. It's just the uh, ones going down the track have a little bit more power to them. So at that point, they can sit there and watch it and see their dream car, or their car like they have in the garage go 200 miles an hour and think to themselves, wow, that could be me. So the evolution of a half mile customer becomes pretty interesting with that because they may have just picked up a, a used you know, 2005 Corvette the week before come and see another 2005 Corvette, same color, same everything as his, but it screams by him with a loud exhaust, pulls in with a bad, you know, cam lope to it. It gives us a reason to be there and communicate and talk to everybody that's at these races. And at the end of the day, they could be our next big customer, or it could be just another really happy guy with a vengeance shirt with a cammed out Corvette that he goes and plays with on the street and joins us at the next race. Eddie started racing with us, coming out to a few events, and the engine we built for him was no longer good enough. He wanted a bigger engine. 474, like a real hot street motor. So we built him a custom 474 cubic inch stroker. I said, Eddie, what are you gonna do with this thing, man? He's like, oh, I don't know. You know, I'll go to car shows and, and show it off and just cruise it around town a little bit. Well, I was supposed to pick it up and they were gonna do their first half mile event. And I said, you know, I'd like to go do that, so we win. Within two passes, we set the half mile naturally aspirated world record for LS engines. Uh, at the time, it was like 171 miles an hour, I believe. And we actually won the naturally aspirated class that weekend, the first time we ever win. Betty and I both got hooked on the car and the record, and it's just grown out of control ever since then. Next thing we know, we start getting competition. You know, there was some stuff back and forth on the internet because we ruffled some feathers. There were some people that had been in winning the class and we just came up on a whim. Folks are coming out and they're, they're coming after Eddie Blackwell. They want to beat that record. They want to take it from vengeance. We knew it was time to step things up. So we built him a 451 inch LSX combination with cannon valve, Moses heads, dual throttle body, tunnel ram intake manifold. Obviously solid roller valve train, big compression, race gas only. Engine made about 1,100 horsepower on a stand. Unbelievable. Put that in there, got the car running. First time down the track with it. And we go 191 mile an hour. 191.8, first pass. Get you some of that. And reset the half mile world record again. Before the end of the weekend, we ran a 194 and secured it again. So we moved into running these races all over the country and gathering tons of data and building certain cars for it, and it's really taken off. We're lucky enough to be able to have some customers that are willing to push the envelope as hard as we are and give us the opportunity to build them a machine that's out there to be able to perform better than anybody else. So I'm Ned Dunphy. I'm a customer and part of the Vengeance Racing family. I drive the 2014 Dodge Viper TA Twin Turbo, which is fully built, calibrated and tuned by Vengeance Racing. I have always been a car guy since I was a young kid, actually. Started off with go-karts, high school, my brother and I always worked on them and tinkered on them. So as I worked through my professional career and had the means to do so, I wanted to build a real car. I emailed Ron. Said he had a 2014 Viper TA and, and was interested in modifying it. I told him that we didn't modify vehicles outside of the scope of GM LS powered vehicles. Keep in mind, Ron doesn't know me from Adam and hadn't looked at a Gen 5 Viper yet to consider any kind of modifications. So one day I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go up and meet with Ron. It's 20 miles from the house. Uh, fast forward a couple of weeks, it's a Saturday morning, I'm in the office working, in comes walks this gentleman and, and it's Ned. And he's got his Viper outside. And we sit down and talk. I was telling him I was looking for a thousand horsepower and fire out of the side pipes. 
the silly goals, but that's what I wanted. And it wasn't too far into that conversation. We both realized we wanted to work together. And so maybe five minutes after that, the car is on the lift. And when we put the Viper up in the air, we're just like, wow, this, this thing's easy. Lots of room, lots of engine, and his goals were very realistic. Getting into the new Gen 5 motor and making sure they understood all the ins and outs was going to take some research. And so Ron told me, as long as you'll be patient, as long as you are OK with us learning on your car, we'll, we'll do this. Built him a custom twin turbo system, did a fuel system upgrade, a clutch upgrade, and then added an aftermarket ECU to control everything. And this was kind of round one modifications. We wound up doubling the vehicle's output from 540 wheel horsepower to 1,080 wheel horsepower. Went to the track with Ned after we finished the build. I gotta be honest and say that I, I kind of thought it was gonna be a shit show. A thousand wheel horsepower with a manual transmission and, and Ned in his suit and tie. This is a total escape from reality. Uh, I'm not a professional driver by any means. This is 100% hobby. Ned fooled me. He took off the suit and tie, put on his race suit, and he drove that car like it was nobody's business. And on the first track outing, he set the Gen 5 Viper manual transmission world record running bottom nines at over 160 miles an hour. It's an adrenaline rush, and I know that there's more power in that car than I can handle, and that's the fun. I love the challenge of putting that thing straight down the track as fast as it'll go. Moving forward, the build has just evolved. And here we are, over three years later, and we've gone from a start of 1,000 horsepower to near 2,000 horsepower now, and lots more to go. This week's gonna be nuts. We've got not only a normal planned scheduled week for regular builds in house for our customers, but on top of that also trying to get every racer ready to be able to load up on a trailer and head out on Friday. We've got a 14 hour trip ahead of us. We're leaving Cumming, Georgia, heading all the way to Dallas, Texas to participate in the Want to Go Fast half mile event out there. We've got 18 individual racers coming out to be a part of Vengeance Racing for the weekend. So it's uh, pretty crazy right now, but nothing we can't handle. The guys at Vengeance just got back the intake from Nitrous Outlets, where they installed a direct injection nitrous system. What we're going to be concentrating on this weekend is using the nitrous that the car has to help spool the turbos and get the car off the line quicker. The goal, of course, is to make improvements without going too deep into the major parts. And so nitrous is just an awesome power adder so that we can put more power to the ground faster all the way down the track. This is kind of an experimental weekend, and if we get it right, it's gonna be blistering. Otherwise, we're gonna get some awesome data and come back and get it right the next time. We just arrived at Hensley Airfield after a 14-hour drive. We're all exhausted. We've been in the truck nonstop, but now we've gotta get these cars unloaded, start prepping them for the race tomorrow morning. We got a lot of work ahead of us, but we'll be ready to go first thing in the morning. Pinsley Airfield is a, a very big facility. The runway is huge, nice surface, traction is good. Weather is great this time of year in Dallas. Cool sea level, that's where you can put down maximum power. It's great conditions, especially for a naturally aspirated guy like me. We're extremely excited to see what the cars are gonna run out here. This is typically the venue we come to to break or reset records just because of the conditions we're able to race in. It's race day, six o'clock in the morning. All the cars need fluids checked, fuels filled, proper calibrations loaded into the ECU, tire pressure set, driver safety meeting before we even hit the track and begin racing. Your first pass this morning, for those of you that are on track support or have big power cars, which is damn near everybody in here, we're not sending you out on kill. We're not sending you out to run 210 on your first run. We're sending you out to make sure the car is smooth, it works, familiarize you with the track, the surface, the conditions, and how the car is gonna react. We need to make sure that the car is safe, nothing's changed, so questions? Cool, hey guys, be safe and thank you. Boom. When I get in that car, it's just like time stands still. You know, you 
roll up there to the line, and it's just a feeling that nothing else gives you. Just before my burnout, I say to myself, God, give me strength. And that's just to, to calm myself down and focus because there's been so much hype. I get so focused. It's just like I come into my own world. And then I just focus on the light, waiting for the green. And then when it comes down, just dropping the hammer. You got a thousand horsepower, naturally aspirated sitting under you. It's exhilaration and relief all at the same time. It's going side to side. You just lay into it and just go cowboy style. It's all you can do. Vengeance is feeding my addiction. All right, we're going to head out and uh, make a test hit in uh, Nate's C7Z. Fresh build, about 1,400 wheel horsepower. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here to uh, drive it this weekend, so he asked me to bring it out and make some test hits for him. So we made one hit, had a little bit of issues with the stock transmission. Uh, we made some changes. We're going to go out and see if, in fact, the transmission is bad and we're replacing it or if we're good to go and it was just a tuning adjustment. So we went out, had a good pass, car left real hard, pulled strong through all the gears. I think fifth gear is actually working. Uh, unfortunately, after we made the four or five shift, about halfway through it, we lost the blower belt. We're gonna cool it off, throw another belt on it, and try to give it one more whirl today. We might have us another 190 mile an hour car here in a little bit. Came out this morning, made the first pass, came back, done some tuning adjustments, came back a second pass, reset the record, ran uh, 197.4. So we're at the very top of the RPM range there. What we're doing is we're doing a diff change, gonna make a, put a 373 in, and uh, try to drop that, get it back down in the power van, hope to bust 200. In the process of swapping to the diff, we found out that one of our shocks had broken. We we're able to go buy an off-the-shelf set of shocks to get us back on the track. We got the 373 in, went out and made one pass. Car just is not responding exactly the way we wanted it. That's why we call this R&D. We're here in Dallas at the Wanna Go Fast Half Mile with Ned's Viper. We've made a pass or two, dialing in the power for these conditions, which are amazing for a half mile race. We just broke 200 mile an hour for the first time in Ned's Viper, and we've got plenty of power to keep putting down. So after I finished that pass, pulling around to get the slip, I knew it was gonna be a good one. So we're gonna review the logs here and see where we can keep putting power in it and how much higher of a mile an hour we're able to achieve out here. Driving the manual transmission, each pass is a little bit different. And I'll tell you, the trick is to catch the shifts exactly right and not spend a lot of time in between them. And so when I can get a nice, clean, no lift, one, two, three, four, which means my gas pedal stays stuffed on the floor and I'm banging the clutch and grabbing the gear, that's the money maker. And you just sit back and hold on, two hands on the wheel, and you know right away by the way the car is tucking, the nose is high, and basically everything down the side has gone blurry. You're on a killer pass. Run, vengeance, kick ass. Best pass ever. We were actually able to set his personal best of a 215 mile an hour pass. That was a sweet pass. It left hard, it pulled hard, we caught every shift rolling. Ned is within just a few mile an hour of the world's fastest Gen 5 Viper in the half mile. So we hope to be breaking that very soon.
guys, man. I could be here for the next hour going down the list of personal best and world records. So Dallas delivered as expected. We had an amazing weekend of racing. It's probably one of the most memorable racing weekends in Vengeance history. But the party's just getting started. Now we have to pack up, drive 14 hours back to Georgia, and we gotta be at work Monday morning, ready to go. I mean, our, our main concern when we go out to these races is that the customer has fun. This is their break, their vacation. They come out, bring their wife, their children, and it's their getaway. The last thing they want to do is be under the hood or under the car working on it in between runs. We travel to the races. We help them dial the cars in. I literally put on my race suit, get in the car. It's been iced. It's been fueled. I'm pushing the button to start it. I'm going out with their instructions. I pull it back into the pits. I get out of it. It's ready for me to go in another hour. Everybody's out there to prove something to somebody for some reason. If they're happy and they're meeting their personal goals or what they want to achieve, we'll still be in business. Being able to watch the customer not only run down the track and put up a number, but come back around with a huge smile on their face, give us a hug and say thank you, you can't ask for anything more than that. We give everybody a small handheld computer or recording device. It will record every run of the vehicle from the beginning to the end. Every part of it will have a, a copy of the calibration and a log of it. I normally handle the cars that have track support with aftermarket ECUs, such as Eddie and Ned's car. So while Jay is the uh, the mastermind on the car, and, and he is stuck on kind of big picture with me doing the, the computer programming and looking at any issues there might be, uh, he's surrounded by the entire Vengeance crew. And so from Daniel, Josh, Taylor, Sean, any of those guys, and more, looking for things to do and wanting to make sure we can run faster. And what we're looking for primarily is issues, things we can avoid, how to make the car faster, what the customer is doing, not doing, how the customer is driving the car. Um, are there any mechanical things that we can tweak to make the car better? So you kind of have to get to know the customer, get to know the car, get to know the track, the weather, and push everything to its limits, but obviously within its boundaries of safety. This was planned out as just being a normal couple weeks of day-to-day -day business through the summertime, which is our busiest time of the year. But on top of that, now getting ready for another race. We've got to get up to Clayton and support 30 plus customers of our own that will be up there. Since I won't be in the Vengeance paddock this weekend, I've got to have a meeting with my crew go over everything, get everything outlined, and make sure that they're comfortable with the responsibilities they've got to carry in my absence. We have literally 40% of the field is Vengeance Racing. So it's gonna be a Vengeance event. 100 cars, max on Saturday, 35 of them are us. I'm praying all goes well. I'm praying that these guys are able to manage it effectively and not overload them. Uh, while I go focus on the quality of the event that we're hosting for these guys that are there racing. Go towards you. So, bad news. Eddie's car, we went to go pull it out. They are loaded onto the trailer. Found out that the rear tires were locking up and the transmission uh, has experienced a failure that we weren't aware of. Yeah, I couldn't get it out of reverse. I'm just worried when I downshifted it, yeah. the drivetrain locked up. Like, clutch in, the car went, whoa. Stop. Jay came to me and he's like, Eddie, I don't think you're going to get to race this weekend. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. The only logical step was to kind of walk around the shop, check out where we would have another transmission, call a couple vendors to see if they had something available, which on a Friday evening is not going to happen. And then Robert, our uh, sales manager here, actually volunteered his daily driver. I have a 2012 Grand Sport with a TR6060 transmission. Eddie has to run. Uh, it's one of the most important cars here. And I just said, hey, guys, let's let's swap my trans out and let's get Eddie to the racetrack. And he said, he's going to let you borrow his transmission. I'm like, what? He said, he's going to let you borrow it. So we are now going to put the car up on a rack, uh, go ahead and get the transmission out of it. The car's not going to be quite as fast as it was with his current transmission. Eddie's used to a sequential transmission, so it's going to be a game changer for him going back to a, an H pattern shifter. Uh, this one's already out. This one's about to come out. 
and they'll switch it over in less than two, two and a half hours. This is kind of normal for a race week. Something like this always happens, so we're we're used to it. It's just part of the game. It's a hell week, and this is how you this is how you make the race. They're running back and forth between both cars. It's just crazy. It's unbelievable what these guys do. Man. Wow. Transmission's in Eddie's car. We've got everything done as, as I knew we would. Getting the trailers loaded otherwise. We're ready to go for a, a big weekend of racing now. And honestly, this is probably the fastest my transmission's ever gonna go. Heaven's Landing is an easy choice as a venue for the type of racing we do. We're on the side of the mountain, waterfalls everywhere, mountainside cabins with views for miles. Clayton is a spectator's dream with the viewing of the entire runway from an elevated position. The scenery is absolutely majestic. And from a driver's perspective, it is a wonderful event because you've got great traction up there. Weather is the challenge. We're here, trailers are emptied. Everybody's ready to race. Cars are on display. We're tired as hell, but we got two full days of racing in front of us. We're gonna get the hell out of here, come back tomorrow and set some records. It's Saturday morning, the fog's lifting. It's almost time to race. But first, we need to have a driver's meeting, go over some safety concerns, go over the way the day is going to work. Everything we're doing out here is to put on a better show than you've ever been to and grow this into something that is more about the actual racing than just a profit-generating business, OK? We want to race. Everything else is secondary. We're getting ready to get all these cars out here to get started racing. Everybody's doing their thing. Street cars, race cars, a little bit of everything time to light these cars up and get down the track. Beautiful day here, it's hot. We're fixing to get out here and just try to lay it down like an all-motor pass, naturally aspirated, and do this deal. Since I got Robert's transmission in there, I'm not wanting to spit it all over the track. I was very, very nervous uh, when Eddie went to make his first pass. kind of flub up a little bit on the shifting. So him jumping back into an H pattern, we were all, you know, kind of biting fingernails and sitting at the, the finish line just waiting to see what happened. It went pretty good. We ran uh, 182 and changed. What's actually happened when you shift the gears, it's actually dropping so low in the RPM range, the engine's making so much torque that it's upsetting the car. So it's breaking the tires loose every time I shift the, the transmission. We've had to make some tuning changes as far as torque limiting that we had in place with the sequential that we are no longer able to use with the H pattern. And I feel confident that even with the heat, we can get a 185 out of this thing today. Got Ned's Viper up here in Clayton for this weekend's event. Uh, made a few passes early on on just boost to get a good baseline of the tune-up for the atmosphere and the conditions that we're facing. We are working ourselves to go faster and faster and faster every time we can. The morning sessions we'll break in, get some data, and then start turning on the nitrous.
late in the day, made a couple of real consistent passes, and uh, pulled two 211 mile per hour passes back to back. We've got ourselves dialed in, and I think we may have hit our power limits right now on the turbos. Day one of racing was a blast. Uh, the weather cooperated throughout the day. Full house of spectators. I think we had almost 2,000 people through the gates throughout the day. And lots of extremely fast cars and extremely happy racers. Day two, Sunday, it's cloudy, it's overcast, it's very foggy. We got some rain today. So it's been raining all morning. We're running out of time here. We want to maximize our on track time for our racers and everybody at the event. So we decided to reach out to the airport manager and see if he'll let us race through lunch. All right, buddy, appreciate it. That's a winner right there, guys. The airport manager kind of surprised us. He came back and he says, yeah, you, you guys can race through lunch, but there's one stipulation. There's a pilot down here in his airplane and he wants to take off, but he wants to race you guys down the runway. Kind of blew our mind a little bit and, and said, yeah, we would definitely welcome that opportunity. They decided to race myself in the twin turbo Viper against a Dallas Performance twin turbo Lamborghini against a speed airplane. Let's have a couple of big badass cars out here uh, against an airplane and run them down the runway and see who can take this win. So after Ned's last pass last night, uh, we had some good time to review the data, see how the nitrous was helping the car get off the line and the changes that we were gonna make. So we're gonna bring the nitrous in a little bit earlier and for a little bit longer period of time to try and really get some boost going in first gear to help Ned get out of the hole and try and catch up to this airplane that's already going to be at speed. So me and the Lamborghini are pulling up to the line here to get ourselves staged. And the aircraft has taken off out ahead of us, which we can see. And so I'm gonna back in here and do a burnout and treat this like any other pass. So we're ready. We're gonna ignore the tree, they're gonna turn it green. And so with the tree green, we're waiting for Drew to give us the hand signal. And so the plane's coming in over the mountain. I'm not sure when he's gonna let us go. I can't hear the Lamborghini, but I'm not gonna think about that right now. I'm waiting for the arms. Just waiting for the arms. All right, here we go, arms down, going. Catching the gears. Don't see the plane. I think I got him. I think I got him. Ned throws the chute before the plane's able to pass him. It looks like the Viper takes the win. I'll tell you, perspective is everything. I've seen the high perspective, the low, somebody who is in front of the finish line, somebody who is behind the finish line. But I was the one in the driver's seat, and I can tell you right now, that plane lost fair and square. We've had a great day. We've got some racing in. But this is the end. Mother Nature took over. There's nothing we can do about it. So you just kind of have to, have to go with it. Sometimes it's about what you're able to take home. And we took home a lot of W's this weekend. I did win the class, natural aspirated class this weekend. And then just the event structure, how it was run, was refreshing. So it was a great event to participate in. And then to wrap it all up, I get back to the Vengeance Camp after the uh, runway shutdown, and I meet with David and Jay and my staff. We didn't have a single failure out of 36 different people racing. It's time to load these cars in the rain and get back to Vengeance. So when I got out of high school, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with my life yet. I had always loved cars. I loved high performance. I loved racing. But I knew I needed to have a serious career path to be successful in this world. 
I decided to join the military and volunteered to go to the 75th Ranger Regiment within the U.S. Army. If you were there, it's because you wanted to be there and you gave 150% of everything you had to be a part of that unit. I've carried that same discipline and same mentality into vengeance racing. This isn't just a job, this is a way of life. This building is really a unit of special operations and acts as such. The guys just put forth more effort than you find elsewhere and they truly live, eat and sleep vengeance racing. We work hard, we play hard. That is what brings everyone to vengeance and helps us create the vengeance family that everyone talks about. It didn't come overnight. It took us a while to find everybody that kind of molded and gelled together like it is now. And not just the shop guys, you know, customers as well. And hanging out with these customers on events and weekends and things like that, we've kind of grown it more into a family atmosphere than anything. I think this weekend is just a testament to that. Uh, taking your daily driver, you know, and, and turning it into to a, a rolling chassis just to get a customer back on the racetrack, that, that is vengeance. I trust Ron 110%. I know a lot of the things he's done behind the scenes to help other people. I like to build relationships. I like to have personal interaction. Seeing the early years, especially going back 11 and a half years and seeing all the change that's come through with vengeance and the half mile, it's just mind blowing. That's truly what it's all about. You know, we have a very short time on this earth and when you can look back at the memories, it's, it's not the what you had, it's the what you did.